Aries, hello there my beautiful friends. We're going to do your general tarot reading for early April 2024. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know I appreciate each and every single one of you. So let's get right down to business as always and start you off with an oracle card here just so we could dip our toes into energy and see what's happening for the lovely Aries Collective in their season, might I add. It's the zodiacal new year. So let's see what we have for the Rams, my God, spirit team. What do you have for us in early April? And yeah, we're just going to take a real quick look at this first card. Then we'll get into the full reading itself. And at the very end, I'm going to pull you a bonus card from the Shadowland Tarot, just to see what might be in the shadows or what shadow work you can lean in on, which is always interesting. But let's get it going here. Let's rock and see what we got for Aries, early April. What messages do we have for my friends? And while we get this card out, I just want to wish each and every single one of you a very happy birthday, whether it's just passed or whether you still have it coming up. And you guys know I'm part of the collective myself, so it's our birthday season. I hope you're getting ready to celebrate. Any April 8th babies like myself? We got that big eclipse coming up. Okay, so this card, I feel like I saw this for you last week as well. And this is a very common theme, especially with what's going on astrologically in the stars. We have our stylish friend right there. But this card has a lot of connotations and it does link to the past and entertainment as well. So there's like total polar opposite messages we could pull from here. Before we fully dive into it though, if you're new here, I'll be speaking about the April subscriber surprise towards the end. So you might want to check that out. Also, if you could kindly illuminate that like button by tapping it right on its third eye, you know, I'd greatly appreciate it. But enough of the promo into the reading. Let's talk about our good pal here. And as I mentioned, it does fit into a lot of the archetypes I've been seeing for weeks and weeks for like the whole entire Zodiac. This card reminds me a lot of the Six of Cups. So we see this individual with that awesome hairdo and it's like he's watching a film. Now in this deck, the film that he's watching is actually another card and they do both deal with the past. So whether this is someone from your past that you have on your mind, it doesn't always have to be. You could just be taking walks down memory lane. And it is birthday season, right? We tend to reflect back on the year that's just passed and also look forward to the future. So that could be good. Another thing I always say with this card is like he's literally watching a movie. So there is something around entertainment. Maybe Spirit's telling you like, hey, if you're feeling a little bored, maybe shake it up. Maybe find new ways to entertain yourself. Maybe a select few of us are entertaining ourselves a little too much and we need to get down to business. But we're just going to put our friend right there. There could be some sort of link to the past. Let's get into tarot. And I always say the first card here, it doesn't make or break the reading. It's just a footnote. Let's get you three cards in the upright. Then we'll get into that intuitive juiciness. Let's shuffle it up one time for the Aries Collective, please. My guides and spirit team, what's going on with my friends? <clears throat> and while we get this deck all shuffled up and ready to go, let's talk about last week's reading. It was titled An Important Talk, and there was a lot of energy around communication, or at least wanting to. And another theme I've been seeing for a couple weeks, I feel like the pesky Ten of Swords has been in the mix. So hopefully I haven't been going through too rough of a time. And remember, the communication energy, that could still linger for a couple of weeks, the importance of getting things off your chest. But let's see what we have for you this week. As you know, energy is very fluid. It's never set in stone. So only take this how it hits for you because we could be seeing your vibe or someone that you're linked to. Let's get it going. Three cards for Aries, please. Three cards for the collective. All right, so we're starting good here. Got the Nine of Cups, very welcoming, very open type of energy. All right, and that's a vibe I'm picking up here very quick. Either this, this is something that you were definitely open to or entertaining. Let's get a couple more here. I like it. It's a good way to start. Okay, double nines, powerful themes. And this is a beautiful vibe. And the one thing I will say is like both of these energies work together very, very well. Let's get one more. Double nines, huh? What do we got for Aries? Thank you. Okay, we got the Queen of Swords right here on the back end. So yeah, the, that important communication energy is still here, at least in a little bit of form. But let's go through, I'll give you some of the classical meanings and archetypes, and we'll get into that juicy intuitive stuff. Now, at first look, first glance, I'm looking down here. That I feel like there's a lot of possibilities in the energy. We have some water, we have some earth, we have some air, which is good. This could be totally different energies or situations you're dealing with, or it could be different aspects of the same one. All of these approaches seem positive to me. That's the one thing I will say. 
especially with the nine of cups nine of pentacles like these energies combine for so so much potential it's really good and i feel like your energy if it isn't open right now it's going to be opening up to something very big but let's go through piece by piece and really start to build this out so position number one we're starting with one of the better cards in the whole entire deck we have the nine of cups look at this individual in the classic deck i call him john travolta because he does look like it i've seen that meme and look how happy and content this person is this is a big card of wish fulfillment blessings wins this is someone that's very content and i always say this is an affectionate welcoming wide open type of energy so if you've been closed off to someone or something in recent times this could be your energy like starting to come around this is really good for some of us, this could just simply be a winner victory of some sort where it's like, oh, all right, I'm happy with this. I like how this is going. I like where this energy is moving. So certain things you're going through could start making steps in the right direction. For some of you, it could be chasing down a winner victory. Now, I do say every single card has positives and challenges. A challenge with this Nine of Cups is sometimes it could be someone that's too welcoming or too nice, where it's like you, you'd give someone a shirt off their off your back, but do they deserve it type of energy this could also represent somebody that's trying to soothe themselves through pleasures of the flesh like overindulgence whether it's throwing a few too many back doesn't always have to go that way but these are little pitfalls to watch out for like yeah keep your energy open to possibilities but not too open which is not really an aries energy to begin with um I'm not saying be skeptical or warning or anything like that. This could be really, really good. Because moving to the center, we have the Nine of Pentacles. Beautiful energy of independence. This is a card of material abundance. So for any of you, if you're having any monetary issues or things in regards to work, this could be a resolution to that energy coming in. I really love this Nine of Pentacles. It's solid. It's stable. It's extremely firm. Same could be said with this Nine of Cups. So we're starting with a very solid, stable blessings filled type of energy which is really nice now this card is lone wolf syndrome where it's someone who's like all right i'm independent i'll do this on my own i got it i don't need any help which i mean sometimes that could be a really good energy to be in like listen i got this very confident type of energy but this could also represent someone in its rougher form that's a little stubborn or set in their ways where it's like you know what? i'm not changing my mind it is what it is like so some of us could be in that mode too where it's like you're sticking firm to something, okay? Whether it's a belief, whether it's your opinion, whether it's a situation, it's like, no, you're not changing my mind. Moving to the back end here is where we get a little mixture of energy. Now, yes, we have the double nines. Now we have a person starting to show up. So spirit could be trying to send you signs and synchronicities. Queen of Swords could represent an air sign that you're connected to. So Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, uh, it's not gender specific, but whenever we see Queen of Swords energy, I say she is all about business. Okay, so it's like no games, no nonsense. If you're not connected to an air sign, you could be stepping into this Queen of Swords energy where it's like, okay, I have my eye on the prize. I'm taking this seriously. So whether it's a situation you're taking seriously, a goal you're taking seriously, in communication, it's straightforward, honest, no games, no BS. So you could be in a mode and mindset in your life and in this time right now where it's like, I'm not messing around. I'm not playing games. I'm not feeding into this. I'm not feeding into that. It's like just very stern and serious. So we'll want to see what's up with her. Now, I do I do say, pardon me, that a challenge with this Queen of Swords is that sometimes it could be a little cold. Okay, so if you've been going through some difficulties in recent times, you might be trying to uh, suppress or sever off some sort of emotion where it's like, okay, I've dealt with this. I don't want to feel that no more. And you could be stepping into a colder type of energy. It doesn't have to be it, though. You might just be dealing with a cold person. But we're going to dive deeper on all of it, Aries. Let's jump in and clarify. Okay. What do we got here for my Rams, please? Gods and Spirit team. What do we got? And yes, this is where I go intuitive with the message, which means I just tell you how it feels to me. So feel free to do further research or rely on your base knowledge of tarot. Because as you know, every single reading is about the reader's interpretation. And I'm just giving you mine. Let's go in on that Nine of Cups here. And yes, if you're a reader yourself, please feel free to play along. That's why the box is here. If you're feeling any messages you want to give to Aries, you can drop it in the comments. I don't mind at all. All right, Nine of Cups time. Why is it here? What is happening here? Okay, quick, Four of Cups. A lot of visualization going on here. Now, for some of you, this could be spirit asking you to do this. 
um, like hold that happy thought or really visualize the outcome you want. There's a lot of manifesting happening in this front end energy. And I feel like it's really good for a lot of you. There could be some sort of like win or victory that's imminent. Like it might not be in your hands right this second, but it's like right there. You just got to keep bringing it in, keep focused on it, keep manifesting it, keep working towards it. The four of cups is a very mental type of energy. Okay. Not mental in a rough way. To me, it's a card of thought. Yeah. It could be a little discontent. But when I see it underneath a card of contentment, it does really speak to some sort of change within you. So once again, for a lot of you, if you've been a little closed off or shutting something out, you could be opening up your energy to that in a big way. But I see a lot of manifesting and for a big chunk of Aries here, if there is something you have been creating or something that's really been on your mind quite a bit that you've been thinking about, Spirit is saying like, listen, you got a big win coming in. All right, it's coming in, this winter victory. Now, we'll see if we'll get more detail as we move throughout. But just the way this energy links together, the Four of Cups with the Nine of Cups, it's like, think happy thoughts, think happy thoughts, stay positive, stay optimistic. So some of you might just be in that mindset right now. If you're not, Spirit's asking you to step into that. Like, listen, don't look at the colder side, don't look at the rough side, think happy thoughts. So maybe it's something about your vibration in general. Like try to keep your vibration high. Let's move over to the Nine of Pentacles though. That's simple. I feel like for a lot of you, something big's coming in. And we'll see if we get a little more action here. So let's see why the Nine of Pentacles is in the mix. Okay, the deck is being very specific here. What do we got? Okay. And this is somebody really taking the approach and phrase, it is what it is. So like, not a whole new level, but it's someone who's taking it very seriously. Like, no, I'm good. I'm cool. I'm cool. Don't worry about me. Um, I like it uh, for the most part. And as you know, I'm part of the Aries Collective myself. Or some, sometimes if we put a little too much energy into something, we could burn ourselves out. And this energy could be telling you to pace yourself with something or not to burn yourself out. But we have this page of wands in reverse. For a lot of you, you could be in a big time of recuperation as well, where it's like, okay, I just need a second. I need to refresh myself. I need to really reassess this situation. So some of you might be in that mode. If you're going through anything too difficult, Spirit could be asking you to reassess the situation, try to think of alternate ways that you could handle it. But the first intuitive message I got here was a lot of acceptance. Okay, with the nine of pentacles and the page of wands in reverse, it's like, Okay, well, I could put in more effort and try to change something or or switch it, but I'm not forcing anything. Like, this is the energy I'm picking up here. It's like, I refuse to force anything. It is what it is at this point. So I think a lot of Aries could be in the mode of attracting things into their life as opposed to chasing it down. So let's keep moving over to that Queen of Swords. Pretty good. I'd say that's a good way to be. And there could be this magnetic energy to you. So let's see why that Queen of Swords is here. And we'll do a quick little recap before we get into the Shadow card. I mean, I do still feel there could be a nice win coming in for a lot of you. So let's see why the Queen's here. Thank you. Quick. Okay. Seven of Swords in the upright here. Why? What are you hyper vigilant about, my friends? If this isn't you, this could be someone you're connected to that is like hyper, hyper vigilant, like on the lookout. Like, all right, I'm keeping my eyes open for any sort of funny stuff. That's the vibe I'm picking up here. Now, this can be really good, but like to me, it's just giving me someone who is on guard, on edge for whatever reason. It's like, are, are you being serious? Are you being truthful? Like, it's giving me that type of vibe. The Seven of Swords could be an energy that is difficult to trust sometimes. It could be, you know, snakes. It could be untrustworthy individuals, people that we want to keep a distance from. And it is a card that could represent warnings. And when I see it under the Queen of Swords, it's like, I'm on the lookout for this. I'm watching out for this. Any funny business, I'm on top of it. So maybe you need to pull back into a more relaxed state here, Aries, like for a portion of you. Maybe you're just dealing with a person that's being hyper vigilant for whatever reason, like their, their energy just feels totally different than what we have here in the front end. That's one thing I'm saying. However, this Seven of Swords could also represent the unknown, the unseen, like things that we don't see coming down the pipeline. So when I see it underneath the Queen of Swords, it's like, okay, well, I got my eyes open. I'm waiting. There's like an anticipation. It's either vigilance, being very vigilant, or there's an anticipation where it's like, all right, any second, I'm waiting on it. I'm waiting on it. I'm waiting on you. Whenever it comes in, I'll be ready for it. 
So take that energy for what it's worth. Odd, especially with all the good energy that we have coming in. So once again, this doesn't have to be you right here on the back end. Um, for a portion of you specifically, if you are connected to an air sign, when I see this, there's someone that might be making a move or an action that you don't see coming as well, specifically if you're connected to an air sign. When I see this, it's like, all right, oh, I didn't expect that from you, but cool, because I don't feel like it's messing any of the other energy up. Let's go through and do a quick recap here, Aries, then we'll get into the shadow card. Lots of moving parts in this week's reading, so only take what's yours. But we have the double nine showing up. We got two court cards. We do have some themes and patterns. But position number one, I have the nine of cups with the four of cups. So there is something about your mind state, your mindset, either purposely trying to manifest something or staying very optimistic, like happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. Maybe spirit's asking you to do that. But another vibe I was picking up is something big is coming in. So for a lot of you, there could be a big win coming in, whether it's work, relationships, something you've been yearning for, something you've been wanting. It feels like it's right within its grasp. Position number two, we have the nine of pentacles with the page of wands in reverse. So maybe some of you are in a time of recovery right now, recharging the batteries. I also got that big energy, like it is what it is. Whatever will be, will be a type of energy where you're in a place of not chasing things down, but bringing them in and manifesting it. Like if it happens, cool. If it doesn't, cool. Like it's giving me that type of energy. Still solid, stable, sturdy. I like it. Moving to the back end, still lots of blessings and possible wins here in multiple areas of life. On the back end, we have the Queen of Swords with the Seven of Swords for a portion of you. You might be hypervigilant in this time, like you're watching for signs, you're wa watching for people. It's like, oh, no one's going to get anything past me. I also got an anticipation, too. So, like, there could be something you're anticipating. It's like any second now, any day now. And it kind of fits with what we had here on the front end. Another thing I will say about the Queen of Swords, Seven of Swords, if you're connected to an air sign, they might act in a way that you didn't quite see coming where it's like all right i didn't expect that from you but whatever like this energy here in the front end feels a little nonchalant if that makes sense where this one's very serious this one's nonchalant please take a screenshot of that aries take what hits let's see what's in the shadows for you so let's shuffle it up one time here my guides what do we got in the shadows for aries and I always like to pull one shadow card at the very end just to see whether it's something within you or something you don't quite see. Shadow cards don't always have to be a challenge. They could be a good thing. So let's get you one. What's in the shadows here? Oh, and yes, if you've made it to this point in the reading, please feel free to check out channel memberships. Put a link for it in the comments below. It's a beautiful way to support the channel. And I have much love for all my channel members. Let's get your shadow card here. What do we got in the shadows for Aries? Okay, Page of Wands, so a very similar energy to what we have here. Now, when I see the Page of Wands, it is one of our cards. So maybe Spirit's at, I mean, we did see that link to the past. We were seeing maybe some of you, there could be certain things around your childhood that could come bubbling up to the surface in this time for sure. But what do pages do? They communicate, they learn new things. And this one is very expressive of its energy. So when I see the page of wands in the shadows, sure, it could be an unexpected communication of some sort. But at the same time, I feel like this is spirit telling you like Aries, this energy right here, take this seriously, pace yourself, bring things in, be magnetic about it. Don't overexert yourself. That's a big thing. Okay, whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, overexerting yourself would have some rough effects on you. That's a big thing with this page of wands. But yeah, there is that energy around communicating, whether it's someone wanting to chat with you or vice versa. We're just going to put it down right there, Aries. That's what I have for you this week, my friends. Don't click away just yet, though. I'm going to give you the details of the April subscriber surprise. If you would like to book a personal reading with me, you could check out my digital calendar and schedule at mastermetaphysics.com. And if you got your name in for the March subscriber surprise, the winners will be announced on April 1st. But for the April subscriber surprise, I'm giving away two copies of the beautiful Tarot in Wonderland. It's one of my favorite decks. So if you'd like to get your name in for that, it's two simple things as always, my friends. First, you must be subscribed. And second, let me know down in the comments if you had to switch your zodiac sign, which sign would you choose to be out of the whole 12? So if you do that, you'll be entered to win. And at the end of the month, the winners will be announced in my community tab. As always, my friends, much love. And I'll see you soon.